Ah, uh, Mario Kart. One of the best game franchises ever to exist. The first Mario Kart came out all the way back in 1992, making the franchise over 28 years old at the time of this video. Ever since then, many Mario Karts have been created, and they all have their great elements and nostalgia factor. But which Mario Karts are the best? In this video, I'll share my personal rankings of every Mario Kart ranked worst to best. As a side note, there is no such thing as a bad Mario Kart game, so if your favorite Mario Kart is lower on my list, don't take it as I hate the game. I like all the Mario Kart games, just there are some that I prefer over others, just like everyone. I'm not going to include any of the arcade ones or Mario Kart Live, since they aren't really the same game. Now of course, if you're new here or haven't already, please go ahead and click subscribe and ring the notification bell. Thank you very much for 300 subscribers, let's now get to 400 subscribers. Now without further ado, let's get ranking. Probably to the surprise of no one, Mario Kart Tour comes in last on my rankings. Released in late summer 2019 for iOS and Android, Mario Kart Tour is the first Mario Kart to be created for smartphones. And unfortunately, despite it being a Nintendo game, it falls victim to the typical problems that many mobile games have, including the fact that it is a pay-to-win game. When you first play the game, you see how it's very similar to a slot machine, since when you pull down on a pipe, almost like a lever for a slot machine, you hope for a very good character or card to help you out in the game, and the whole game runs on that. Skill doesn't really matter in this game like other Mario Karts, and instead, if you don't have the right character or card for a specific course, you will lose and not get 5 stars no matter how good of a player you are. Now how do you get the right character or card that you need? You spend your rubies to pull down on the pipe or lever again and hope for a good combination. And if you run out of rubies, you have to pay for them. And that doesn't even guarantee you will get what you want. As you can see, if you want to have a good chance of getting what you need, it could cost you as much as $70 for 135 rubies. And when you keep in mind that it costs 5 rubies to use the pipe, you can only use it 27 times with your 135 rubies. 27 chances for $70 dollars chances not guarantees this kind of pay to win crap is why i still like owning a handhold like the 3ds or obviously now the switch in 2020 you can actually get good games on them without all this pay to win crap i understand that nintendo did this to cover the cost since the game is free to download but i would rather pay 60 dollars for a full-fledged quality game than have all these microtransactions that end up costing way more in the future when you really add them up Aside from all this pay the win crap, the game itself is actually pretty decent. The controls are actually decent, despite them being touchscreen controls, and I really like the idea of having special tournaments with courses themed around different cities around the world and the holidays and seasons throughout the year. Nintendo also recently added a multiplayer mode, so you can either play locally or online with other people. The graphics are pretty good for a mobile game, and the game seems to perform pretty well no matter what phone you're running it on, except for obviously if you're running it on in like a really old phone. And I really like the special items idea where every character gets the special item similar to Mario Kart's Double Dash. Overall, Mario Kart Tour is a decent Mario Kart game, but the microtransactions and pay to win concept that plagues most mobile games really drains the fun out of the game for me, and because of that, I rarely play it. Next up, we have the first Mario Kart ever on a handheld, Mario Kart Super Circuit for the Game Boy Advance. The game came out in July of 2001 and used ray casting, similar to the original Mario Kart on the SNES, so that it could run on the Game Boy. Mainly due to the fact that this game was on the Game Boy though, it really limited the game a lot and it felt like a downgrade when compared to the previous games like Mario Kart 64 and Super Mario Kart. This game by far has the worst graphics of the Mario Kart series, and it just doesn't really run that well. In addition, the controls suck. The steering is way too sensitive, which just makes it a pain to steer. The game also took away the characters and items that were added in Mario Kart 64. Once again, I understand that this is the first time Mario Kart came to a handheld, so I'm not expecting it to be perfect, but I just don't think the Game Boy Advance was really ready for Mario Kart, mainly just because of the limitations of the hardware and how underpowered it was. And these limitations just didn't really make it that fun to play, even back in the day when this game came out. This game also suffers from the same problem as Super Mario Kart, where there are plenty of duplicate courses just with a different number after the name and a different layout, i.e. Mario Kart Circuit, or I, I think it's like Mario Circuit or something like that, Mario Circuit 1, Mario Circuit 2, Mario Circuit 3, like etc, both Super Mario Kart and uh, 
Mario Kart Super Circuit have this problem where a lot of their courses are kind of like that, if you know what I mean. Uh, that being said, though, this was the very first Mario Kart on a handheld once again, and it does do a fine job in that aspect. As I said, there's no such thing as a bad Mario Kart, just less good ones. And when it comes to this game, it just doesn't compare that well to the other Mario Karts. Coming in at number 8, we have the game that started it all, Super Mario Kart on the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. This game came out all the way back in August of 1992, making it just over 28 years old at the time of this video. Since this game came out before 3D gaming existed, it, along with many other SNES games, used ray casting, which basically uses the colors and shadows to render a 3D perspective in a 2D map, to give this game its 3D effect. This game itself was pretty good for the time because of its ray casting, and if you grew up with a SNES, chances are that you grew up with this game as well. Now obviously, technology and Mario Kart have both significantly advanced since the release of this game, so when you compare it to some of the more modern Mario Karts, it simply can't compete. But we can't forget that this game started the popular Mario Kart series. My biggest issue when actually replaying this game in 2020 is just how bad the physics are. The steering and drifting were extremely sensitive, even more so than any other Mario Kart, and bumping into characters, walls, or other objects just make your car bounce off like it's if it's a moon bounce. As you can see, revisiting this game, I suck at it. <laughs> so while obviously not perfect, Super Mario Kart is still one of the most important Mario Karts since it started this great series. Alright, I have a feeling that a lot of people are going to complain that I put Mario Kart 64 so low on the list. Many people who grew up with this game feel very nostalgic towards it, and it's certainly not hard to see why. The music, the sound effects, the words that pop up when your character crashes or bounces, these were all amazing and nostalgic elements to the game. But putting nostalgia aside, this game honestly is not the best Mario Kart and it didn't really age that well. This was the very first Mario Kart to use 3D graphics, and while all of these graphics were amazing back in 1996, today they just didn't really age that well. The game also has decent controls overall, definitely better than Super Mario Kart and Mario Kart Super Circuit, but the drifting is extremely whack, especially with how the camera angles when you drift. It just doesn't feel right. The other main problem that this game had was that some of the courses were just way too long. The longest courses in the game, while we were Stadium and Rainbow Road, were so long that they would take as long as 3 minutes just to complete one lap. Thankfully though, there is a cool shortcut you can do in Rainbow Road to bypass a good portion of the track. So overall, Mario Kart 64 is easily one of the most nostalgic games ever created, even if you didn't grow up with it. But when putting nostalgia aside and comparing the different aspects of the game to the other Mario Kart games, it just doesn't hold up that well. Especially today. When the Nintendo 3DS first came out in 2011, it didn't really have any must-have games that launched. Not at least until later on in the year when we got Mario Kart 7. This game comes with both a lot of stuff that I like, and a lot of stuff that I don't really like, hence its place on the list. Mario Kart 7 finally introduced customizable carts. This was something many people have been begging Nintendo to do for a long time, and Mario Kart 7 does a great job. The only downside is that Mario Kart 7 took away bikes that were previously available in Mario Kart Wii. This actually really disappointed me, as I really liked the handling and drifting that bikes provided us. The courses in the game were also only okay for me. There were some pretty good courses courses like Music Park and Rainbow Road, but there really wasn't that a single course in the game that wowed me or that I really felt nostalgic for like in most of the other Mario Karts. This also marked the start where I feel like Nintendo made Mario Kart too easy. 150cc felt like 100cc in the older Mario Karts. One thing though that I do really like about this game are the controls. They were simple, refined, and worked very well. Mario Kart 7 is a good game, but it just didn't really have the wow factor or nostalgia factor that most of the other Mario Kart games had for me, and it honestly is one of the more forgettable Mario Karts because of that. Next up, we have the very first Mario Kart I ever played. 
Mario Kart Double Dash on the GameCube. The GameCube was my very first console, and I have some pretty good memories of playing this game. Some of my favorite courses were Mushroom Bridge, Daisy Cruiser, Mushroom City, DK Mountain, and Rainbow Road to name a few. And unlike Mario Kart 64, this game aged much better. The controls are more refined, and the graphics don't look too far off of modern games. Also, as the name suggests, this Mario Kart has a new concept where there would be two players per car. One would drive, and the other would use the items. Each character also had their own special item. The music is also very good. I especially really like Rainbow Road's music in this game. Hearing that song makes me tear up over my early memories of playing this game. The good old days. Mario Kart Double Dash is definitely one of the best Mario Karts. Next up, taking the fourth and third spot are Mario Kart 8 and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe respectively. I'm combining both of these games in one segment because they are virtually the same game, just that Mario Kart 8 Deluxe includes a proper battle mode, more characters, and the DLC tracks for Mario Kart 8. Mario Kart 8 was first released in 2014 on the Wii U, and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe was released in 2017 on the Nintendo Switch, making it the newest Mario Kart on a Nintendo console. This was also the very first Mario Kart to run in full HD at 1080p, and it shows. Compared to any other Mario Kart, Mario Kart 8 and 8 Deluxe by far have the best graphics of any Mario Kart, like it is not even close. The controls are also the best in this game. They are simple and extremely fluid and refined. The courses are also pretty good, and Mario Kart 8 brought back bikes. The coolest addition though to this game is 200cc. It takes 150cc's difficulty while dramatically increasing the speed. I don't know about you, but I really like 200cc. I only really have two major complaints with this game. I hate that coins are items, and while the courses are pretty good overall, I don't think they are quite as good as the next two Mario Karts on my list. Mario Kart 8 and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe are both solid games. Ah, Mario Kart DS. I have a ton of memories playing this game as well. This was the first good Mario Kart on a handheld, and it really had a lot to offer. It was the first Mario Kart to add retro tracks, or refined recreations of tracks from previous Mario Kart games, in addition to its new ones. It also has some of the best Mario Kart tracks ever, like Tick Tock Clock, Waluigi Pinball, Luigi's Mansion, Wario Stadium, and the list just goes on and on. This game also has a pretty good character roster, and was also the first Mario Kart to work online. And while performance of it honestly sucked even back then, it was still really cool. It was also the first, and as of today, only Mario Kart to have Mission Mode, where you had a bunch of fun challenges to complete. Mario Kart DS offered so much, and did everything it offered very well, minus the online. But as much as I love this Mario Kart, there is another Mario Kart that I like even better. And for those of you guys who have been watching me for a long time, probably already know what it is. That's right, Mario Kart Wii is my favorite Mario Kart game of all time. This was the third Mario Kart game I've played, and it also was the Mario Kart I played the most in my younger days. Now a lot of people might disagree with me putting this game up at the number one spot because of how hard and hectic 150cc could be in this game, but that's one of the reasons why I love it. It makes the game frustrating but in a good and fun way. It motivates you to keep practicing and persevering to become a better player. This game also has the best character roster in the franchise, and it introduced bikes, which were a fantastic addition. The courses in this game are some of, if not the best courses ever in Mario Kart. I mean come on, Toad's Factory, DK Summit, Coconut Mall, Grumble Volcano, Maple Tree Light, Dry Dry Ruins, Moonview Highway, there are so many good courses in this game. The music is also fantastic. This game also has a pretty good battle mode with a healthy selection of courses, and the online was, well, actually fairly decent. This game is so good that not only was it the best selling Mario Kart game of all time, but there was still an active community that brought back online and tournaments after Nintendo discontinued them. And there are still tons of people who still play this game even to this day. Mario Kart Wii is my favorite Mario Kart of all time, and I still enjoy playing it to this day.
Alrighty guys, so those are my rankings of the best Mario Karts in the franchise. Overall, there is no such thing as a bad Mario Kart. All of these games are great. There are just ones that I think are better than others. But of course, as always, be sure to let me know down in the comments below what you guys think are the best Mario Karts. I would love to hear what your personal list is, and if you agree or disagree with me, and why. Of course, as always, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe so you do not miss the next awesome video. If you didn't really enjoy this video, then I guess the other button works fine as well. Be sure to also follow me on Twitter at Jones underscore RMJ to stay up to date with what I am doing, and be sure to hop on my Discord server, the link to that is in the description. Thank you very much for watching guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.